Well, Rush Limbaugh just can't get over the fact that the most conservative Supreme Court in the history of this nation has said no to Trump. He just can't get over it. He's losing sleep, I think, over this. And my whole point about this, folks, is that if the most conservative Supreme Court is denying what Trump wants, it's got to be pretty darn big. And there's a reason why they're saying no, because it's unfair it's downright rotten, and it shouldn't be done anyway. But here's what Rush says about it. Have a listen. Supreme Court tells Trump, you can't do it this way. Go back and figure out how to do it right like mm-hmm. any other normal president would and tell us again how you want to do it. However, it is reported the Democrats win big hmm. because it's reported as, gosh, this guy Trump has no idea what he's doing. Right. Exactly. That's what we say. Supreme Court overrules Trump. Supreme Court says no to Trump. And then you have the ancillary stories. Most conservative court in history tells conservative president. (laughs) Which end did that come from, by the way, Rush? They're getting everything they want out of this. Mm, Maybe. This essentially is, ladies and gentlemen. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. The court saying that Trump cannot get rid of anything Obama did unilaterally. So- oh, come on. That's a bunch of BS. I mean, that's a smokescreen. It has nothing to do with what Obama did, and they're not protecting. Why, why would the most conservative Supreme Court in the history of this nation, why would they all of a sudden say that they have? I mean, it makes no sense that they're trying to protect Obama. The thing that you can't come to grips with, Rush, is that their decisions show how unfair and rotten Donald Trump is trying to be by allowing gays to be discriminated in the workplace and by allowing the DACA kids to be sent home. And by the way, where are you going to send the kids? They've lived here practically their whole lives. They may in most cases have no family back there. I mean, think about what you're doing. I mean, it doesn't make sense. And it's not, un- it's not fair, and it doesn't make sense. That's why the Supreme Court said no. So how bad does it, I mean, one question we should ask ourselves is how bad and how unfair is what Donald Trump is trying to do with regard to these past two decisions? How unfair and how rotten does it have to be for the most conservative Supreme Court in the history of this nation to say no? It's got to be pretty dang bad folks for them to say no and what we're seeing here it's kind of interesting what we're seeing here with these two decisions i believe is the self-appointed king of america donald trump is being told no by the highest court in the land that's a pretty big deal and we're also starting to see a few different other cracks forming in the trump firmament if you can call it that take the firing of the top prosecutor jeffrey berman who has overseen the infamous Southern District of New York Manhattan Department of Justice office, Senator Lindsey Graham over the weekend, who chairs the Senate Judiciary Committee, said Saturday that he will honor the blue slip tradition and require the consent of home state senators to proceed on the Senate appointment of Berman's replacement. So what that means is that if Senators Chuck Schumer and Kirsten Gillibrand do not like the replacement appointment that Donald Trump is going to make, Well, that won't get confirmed. That appointment will not be confirmed. And that's a pretty big deal. Um, And I'm quite surprised, actually, that Senator Lindsey Graham came out and said that. Every now and again, and it's because he's maybe up for election, maybe, just maybe. But Rush is viewing the Supreme Court pushback as a move by the Supreme Court to protect the Obama administration's prior unilateral rulings, his, um, you know, these things that Obama did, you know, by the stroke of a pen. He's trying to frame the Supreme Court decision as a move by the court to protect Obama. I mean, that's, that's just crazy. I mean, it's assonant. They can't grapple with the idea that the reasons why the Supreme Court is pushing back is that not only are these bad ideas allowing gay discrimination in the workplace and sending the DACA kids back home, not only are these bad ideas, they're hugely unfair 
ideas, rotten, rotten to the core, and they don't represent who we as Americans really are. So Rush also had this to say. He came pretty close to saying the Supreme Court was the deep state. Have a listen. Actually, what it is, is there's just a total hatred for Trump mm, among no. the elites and glitterati in Washington, D.C. Glitterati? And the objective there is to deny Trump a victory on anything. Oh, come on. I just don't think, and particularly now with the, with the judicial branch exercising its own form of supremacy over the other two branches, and they're letting them do it. Oh, come on, Rush. That's insane. You came this close to calling the Supreme Court the ill-fated deep state. It's that old argument that you use when you always roll this out. When someone who's Republican or conservative says something bad about Donald Trump, you point at him and you call him deep state enemies in an effort to diffuse what fellow Republicans and conservatives may say that's not flattering to Trump. It's the old ruse that you pull out of the hat. They're deep state. Well, in this case, he came very close to saying that, but he called them elites, Washington elites and glitterati. Oh, boy. Well, folks, so Rush is always changing subjects here. He's always got to find a culprit, a scapegoat. We all know this. He's got to have something he can point at, a scapegoat. And last week, old Rush Limbaugh decided, based on a conversation that he had with, I guess it's an ex-friend of his on the golf course, that he now hates young female millennials. Listen to this. This is quite scary. Encountered it. 10 years ago, mm -hmm. a friend of mine, a big, big conservative, how we met. Right. And he uh, was eminently successful in his field. Good for him. And in many ways, he was far more conservative than I. It's impossible. God. And then <laughs> one day we're out on a golf course. Right. He says, I don't know what all this talk about immigration is. It's the greatest thing this country's got going for it. Whoa, 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 what? Yeah, of course he would. Yeah, if, if it weren't for immigration, we wouldn't even have a country. Is this, you know, California's no different today than it was 50 years ago. I don't know what people are, what? Come on, Rush. And it went on and on and on like that. And I said, uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I've, I've never known you to think this way. My daughter opened my eyes. Oh, here we go. How'd that happen? Well, she went away to college. She'd come home, and we'd have these college. talks. I had my eyes open. I'd never looked at it. Mm. Things that way. Well, well, he was paralyzed with that news. And it's, it's actually kind of scary here that... Uh, Rush goes on to form this new notion. And keep in mind that Rush never went to college. He went to one semester. But he had this to further say about it. But that's effectively what is happening today. Oh, here we go. Young millennial students are going away to college and they're coming back and they're basically bringing back Marxism. Oh, no. Come on. Leninism and <sighs> communist theory that they're being taught. You're nuts. Not in those words. They're bringing it home as compassionate policy for this minority group or that minority group. And for some reason, the parents. You're nuts. Come on. Are accepting it and changing their entire world view. In order to please and satisfy the kids. Oh, Rush, come on. The real concern that Rush Limbaugh has here, I mean, this is a new one right out of the blue. I've not heard this before from Rush. But the real concern that Rush Limbaugh has with immigration folks is, and the Leninism thing and the Marxism thing, that's a smokescreen. He's throwing that out. That's a smokescreen. The real problem that Rush Limbaugh has with immigration is that because Trump is so anti-immigration, there's so much hatred for the immigrants, they're all afraid that they won't ever vote Republican. And who would? Who would? If all they hear is Donald Trump bashing them. I mean, who would vote for a Republican if all they hear is the top Republican, the president, bashing them all the time? I mean, people like Donald Trump and Rush Limbaugh, they are the real deep 
state here, folks. Make no mistake about it. They are the real deep state. They are afraid of losing their power. They're afraid of being voted out by a society that doesn't want the racism anymore. They don't want it. And that's the real fear that's at work here. That's the fear that they have, folks. This Flash Briefing was brought to you by the Rusted Culture Podcast, and you can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, Spotify, and Google Play, or wherever you find your podcast. Thanks for listening.